Since my last video on the uh, Seagate 1.5 terabyte hard drive problems, I um, had a lot of responses about this little device that I mentioned. Enough so that I thought it would warrant doing a little segment on this device here. Now, this device is a USB. You see, it just plugs into your USB port to either to a bare hard drive connection. And that could be a SATA drive, a three and a half inch IDE hard drive, or a two inch uh, laptop hard drive. We'll plug right into that. And this device will allow you to do a true hot swapping connection. You plug this into your USB, you plug this into your hard drive, you don't have to reboot the computer, you just plug it in, you want to go to another hard drive, unplug it, plug this into the hard drive, plug this into the USB, and look at another hard drive. Now why would you want to do that? Well, I'll give you a couple of scenarios on why you might want to do that. If you have a bunch of legacy drives laying around, like I had a bunch of old hard drives from old computers, in a box in the garage and I was like, I wonder if I can use these drives, can I erase them, what's on them? I didn't want to sit there and install each drive in the computer, wait for it to boot up, the BIOS has to look at it, recognize it. Just allow me to just look at each drive at will randomly whenever I want and see what's on it and decide if I want to use that drive for something else. The other reason is if you have a drive that might not be compatible with your computer system for some reason or with the BIOS for some reason. For example, as I mentioned in the Seagate video, a th 3 gigabit per second SATA drive, which is a SATA 2 protocol, plugged into a SATA 1 motherboard, which is a 1.5 gigabit per second protocol, the um, computer might not see the drive at all. Won't recognize it, you boot up and there's no drive there. You can still use the drive with one of these. You plug this in and it'll see it. Now this is obviously, of course, a USB connection. So even though it's a 1.5 megabit per second drive or whatever you're using, you're limited to USB speed. And that's 480 megabits per second megabits, not bytes. So it is a bit slower. If you have huge amounts of data, it is going to be slower, but it's uh, usable. At least you can use it. Another reason uh, you might want to use these is uh, if you have an encrypted drive that is not seen by your system for some reason. Now this happened to me. I had an encrypted drive and for some reason when it's in the computer installed in the machine and I boot up the machine I cannot access that drive. The computer just won't see it. But when I use this device the computer will see it. This completely bypasses the BIOS having to look at the hard drive. It's the operating system that sees the hard drive when you use this. Now another reason that you might find this useful as I did here, I turned an uh, internal DVD-ROM drive into a USB by plugging this device into it, and now I have a USB DVD-ROM drive. Actually, it's a DVD burner, but, and I just put some little felt feet on the bottom of this thing. Now, why would you want to do that? Well. I'll give you a couple of good reasons why. Windows product activation. Windows product activation, if you don't know what I'm talking about, do a search on the internet for Windows product activation and specifically look for votes. Windows collects votes when it boots up and it bases those votes on your hardware. If Windows sees a significant number of changes in the hardware on the computer, it eventually says, hey, this is not the same machine I was originally installed on. I ain't booting up anymore. It deactivates itself. Now, the problem is you can put the old hardware back in and Windows doesn't care. It's not like it says, 
Oh, that's okay. You put the old hardware back in. Now I'm activated again. Ah, doesn't work that way. Once Windows deactivates, it stays there. And one of the things it looks at is your CD-ROM. So, in my case, my CD-ROM did eventually quit, as they all do. I left it in the machine. I highly recommend leave your old CD-ROM in the machine just to keep Windows happy and then get yourself one of these and make yourself a USB. Um, you know, these you get these internal drives dirt cheap and Windows stays happy. Now I've heard it suggested on the internet, I did some reading, that you can put a secondary internal CD-ROM in your machine and Windows is happy as long as it still sees the old one in there. Well, that didn't happen for me. I tried that and Windows could care less that the old one was still there. It only saw that there was a new one in the machine and it deactivated itself. So um, that's another reason why having one of these around can be handy. Also, when you boot up your computer, your CD-ROM looks for a disk. It wants to know if there's a disk in the drive, and it does that by firing up the laser, and then the laser uh, moves up and down to try to focus on the disk and determines if there's a disk in there or not. It does this every time you open the tray or every time you boot up your computer, and that burns up laser life. Lasers do have a finite lifetime, and um, you're using up that life every time you turn on your computer. I don't plug power into this thing unless I know I'm actually going to use it. So it's just another savings right off the top right there. So this device does have a lot of good uses and uh, what I do highly recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend is that you get one that has these little lights on it to tell you what's going on because I um, bought one of these once on eBay that didn't have any indicators on it and you can get them dirt cheap that way but I'll tell you what it's a real exercise in frustration because they're, they're, these are not instantaneous it's not like you plug it in and you just go to your computer and you look for your drive first the USB has to recognize the device that's plugged in then the computer logs the drive and it goes through all the files and so forth so there's, there's a little bit of time there and with different drives I found sometimes it can take even longer than with other drives so this at least tells you there's one light here for it's a busy light tells you when your data is being moved around this one here is USB as soon as you plug in the USB connector this light comes on and says USB is alive and well I'm ready to go give me a hard drive this here tells you that there's a SATA device connected and it's it's in the ready ready to go so spend the money do yourself a favor get one that has the little indicators you'd be, really be glad you did so anyway that's uh, that's all I wanted to tell you about this one I don't know what else to tell you and uh, I actually hope that that helps you out with something I was really happy when I discovered this thing thanks for watching